A dire situation, or at least an extremely concerning situation, has arisen in the South Pacific at Guam, where the USS Teddy Roosevelt, one of our carriers, is in dock because more than 100 sailors have fallen ill. The captain of the uh, carrier, Captain Bet Crozier, wrote to the Navy's Pacific Fleet that you need a lot of help. Decisive action is required, removing the majority of personnel from a deployed U.S. nuclear aircraft carrier. Isolating for two weeks may seem like an extraordinary measure, but it's a necessary risk. I'm joined by Admiral James Stavridis, former commander of Southern Command, former commander of carriers, former uh, Allied Supreme Commander. Admiral, we have a Navy story this morning. I'd like your reaction to what's going on there. I think the Captain Q <clears throat> has done exactly the right thing. And boy, that takes a lot of, uh, of leadership in a very tight situation, I think unlike anything a captain has seen, certainly in modern times, um, he knew he could not continue on his current mission. He's got 5,000 sailors on that ship who you and I both know are packed together in birthing compartments. Think about your kitchen with 15 people living in it. That's kind of what it looks like. So there's no way to social distance. There's no way to do the kind of conventional things, and you can't even do what a cruise ship can because a cruise ship has a a cabin for everybody. On the Navy ships, these big birthing compartments, people are just packed in. So the captain had to go to his chain of command and ask to get all of those sailors off the ship. Now, that's extremely hard because to do it right, you've got to get them ashore and get them into individual rooms. And they're on the relatively small island of Guam. Fortunately, Guam has a a, a tourist industry. It has hotels, probably not very full right now. So I suspect the 90 percent of the crew and Hugh, we're talking 4,500 sailors are going to have to get off the ship, get into hotel rooms, weather this thing for 14 days and the remaining 10 percent of the crew say 500 sailors uh, are going to stand by on the ship because newsflash it's a nuclear aircraft carrier with nuclear reactors it's loaded with missiles and bombs and high performance aircraft you can't just walk away and lock the door so this is uh, as difficult a situation as i've seen we ought to all commend Captain Crozier for doing exactly the right thing, stepping away from the mission and saying the health of my sailors comes first because we're not in a war right now. I'm going to do the right thing for my sailors. Now, Admiral Stavridi, the chatter online yesterday was that Captain Crozier would be cashiered for going outside of the chain of command and leaking the letter. One, we don't know that he leaked the letter. Number two, I think that would be such blowback on Secretary Esper uh, and further down the line, the uh, acting Secretary Modley and, and uh, Sino Gide. I, I just don't think that's a wise idea. It would be devastating, I think, to morale. What is your thought on that? Uh, it would be uh, devastating, not just on morale, but to uh, operational performance. Let, let, let's recall um, a couple of summers ago, Uh, The big Navy story, unfortunately, were two destroyers having collisions with merchants. Um, We correctly cashiered the captains of those ships because they were performing incompetently. They didn't handle their ships well, drive their ships well. This is the opposite of that situation. This is a commanding officer who is exercising strong leadership, speaking truth to power. And by the way, personally, I I don't know Captain Crozier, but I find it highly unlikely that a nuclear-trained Navy officer who is also a pilot, naval aviator, has to be to command that carrier. I don't see an individual like that leaking a letter. Uh, Somebody perhaps working for him did it. Someone perhaps above him in the chain of command leaked it. We'll never know, as usual, with leaks. But in this case, I think he did, from all I can see, everything right. He should be anything but cashiered. His leadership ought to be commended. Additional chatter yesterday about this situation is that once the virus runs through the crew, the TR will become the most valuable asset in the fleet. Expect a longer deployment. And number two, if you're in command, expect your command tours to be extended because all of a sudden you've got an immune ship, a ship that can go anywhere at any time and and be immune to this virus. Your thoughts on that speculation? 
I think it is part of a larger picture we ought to mention here, which is that um, this is not going to be the only time this happens. The, the TR will not be the only ship that has virus run through it because the conditions here are so positive for this virus. And by the way, it won't just be the Navy. We're going to see Air Force units that are packed in their uh, fighter squadron bays in Europe. Uh, we're going to see this uh, in a variety of different circumstances. The, the real nightmare, by the way, Hugh, would be for this to get into our nuclear strategic force and have a ballistic missile submarine uh, have a similar challenge. And I, I think it's likely that we will probably see that going forward. So the whole Navy and all of the armed forces are going to have to stretch here, support the units that go down when they have to come offline. This is going to mean, for example, with TR, that another carrier or two are probably going to stay online at least an extra month. Um, so there's going to be stretching the whole way. Bottom line to your question once it runs through the crew, yes, that will be a positive uh, combat-ready ship, and that's a good thing. But unfortunately, I think we're going to see this scenario repeat itself, not only through the U.S. Navy, but through other elements of the armed forces as well. This will be a real challenge. Now, we saw the Truman stay uh, at sea for a long time last year. Do you expect the same thing to happen to the TR once it's recovered? I do, uh, unfortunately, and I think you're going to see a lot of Navy ships stay at sea uh, because port visits are the way that the virus can get into a crew. Um, here, an important tactical plus is the rollout, evidently, of this so-called instant COVID-19 test, which can do a very light swab and tell within 15 or 20 minutes whether an individual has COVID-19. We need to get that out to the armed forces, especially for deploy, as quickly <clears throat> as we possibly can, because that's how we would then be able to uh, have crews come into port. Then you could check them as they came back from Liberty, cull out those who had caught the virus, isolate them, ship can go back to sea. Boy, until we have that kind of fast turnaround a device out there, I think, yes, Navy ships are going to spend a lot of time at sea. By the way, uh, the longest I ever spent at sea was uh, about 200 days, and that felt like forever. That was uh, seven months at sea. But I think some of these ships are going to go longer than that before all said and done. We really need the antibody test so that we will know who has it and therefore has yes. immunity to get to the fleet. Now, this is a tricky question, Admiral. It seems to me that we've got to bring the curtain down on military-related stories so that adversaries do not know anything about readiness. Agree or disagree? I disagree. I think that's going to be um, – it, it would be uh, one thing if we were involved in a war right now, in a global war. But I think given the circumstances of the moment, I don't think we want to pull that curtain completely closed. We've got families to inform – Let's face it, this is going to be part of how we deal with the virus globally, um, and we're not in a, on a wartime footing. If this were World War II, I'd say absolutely correct. We're not quite at that stage yet, so I'm always one to be willing to have the, the Navy and the other services talk about what they're doing as openly as they can. In these circumstances, I think it's important, and I'll close, Hugh, by saying um, it's, it's important for another reason, which is that I think the public— rightly, is expecting the U.S. military to step up and help the country fight the COVID virus. And we, we should and we will. And the beautiful hospital ship Mercy is in Los Angeles and the Comfort is in New York right now as sort of a down payment on the U.S. military's support to this uh, fight against the COVID-19 virus. But the public needs to realize that our uh, military, just like our police, just like our firemen, just like our doctors, just like our nurses, we're not bulletproof either. There are challenges we have to face in the military, and job one has got to be the health of the force because that is the, how we maintain the security of the United States. 
Last question, Admiral, we're out of time, but uh, our mutual friend Captain Hendricks wrote in the public domain last week, expect a, quote, shoulder-to-shoulder incident. He was predicting China, PRC, and U.S. What we had was China and Japan, helicopter and destroyer, uh, PRC helicopter, uh, Japanese destroyer. What do you read into that incident? Do you agree with Captain Hendricks, also retired, that we've got to be very alert to the PRC pushing at this moment? I do agree with Jerry Hendricks, and I've, I've spoken a lot, and you and I have, about the South China Sea. We had to recognize there's something called the East China Sea, which is that between China and Japan. It is a very contentious area of the world. There are disputed islands there. The Senkakus, the Japanese call them, the Dayu, the Chinese call them. Um, it is a hot spot like the South China Sea, um, and so that entire area... Uh, is dangerous and volatile, and it would not surprise me to see China try to take advantage of this situation in some way. Admiral James Stavridis, retired United States Navy. Thank you, Admiral. We'll talk again next week. We will see what is going on with the TR and the rest of the fleet. I am uh, I'm loath to disagree with the Admiral, so I won't. I'll just not say anything. I'll just wait and see what happens. But we rarely do we disagree. But today, maybe a little bit. I might bring that curtain down.